a number of years ago, I put $1,000 on some stock, and, uh, and I forgot about it. And I got an email that I had, it had been so inactive that they were going to turn it into the state. And so I called over there, and I said, I want to activate this. It was like two days before the deadline. And I said, well, how much is that worth? And it was worth over $8,000. It had gone up to 8000 So hallelujah. So that's wonderful. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. I want to share tonight, uh, and I'm not going to share very long because I want us to pray. And I want us to have a real powerful prayer meeting this evening. But it's very important that we understand the power of the Word of God and the importance of the Bible in our lives. We are seeing right now things happen that we never thought would happen in the church. And we're seeing it happen right here in Louisville. Churches are beginning to um, recognize homosexual marriages, perform homosexual marriages when it's very plain in the Bible that that is an abomination unto God. The Catholic Church is beginning to change literally their doctrine that they've stood on. And when the cardinals voted two-thirds against the Pope, one of his spokesman said, well, many of these cardinals are very old, and over the next year, many of those will be replaced, and next year we'll have another vote. Well, that tells me that some of those cardinals are going to be removed to, to uh, people get in their place that will, uh, will open themselves to the vote of the Pope. And all of this reflects simply their attitude and their view of the Word of God. And when a person <clears throat> does not have a view that the Word of God is infallible, it changes not that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, they come up with these things that sound real cute, but they absolutely are they're a heretic. And that is that the Spirit is greater than the Word, they come up with the tr Spirit trumps the Word of God. They come up with the book is an ancient book. And does it, we must adapt to our world that we're in today. But the Word of God does not change. God has placed a premium on His Word even over His name. And He says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word will not pass away. Those who take away from the Word of God, God will remove them, and a curse <clears throat> literally comes upon their lives. Now, here's a story of a man by the name of, of Jonadab, and he was a descendant of Rechab, or they were the Rechabites. <clears throat> they were a part of a, a group called the Kenanites. There's a lot of ites in this, but... They're very, a very profound family in, in the Bible. The fact is, this family, uh, Moses married one of the daughters of the Kenites. That's, that's uh, the family he uh, married into when he was in, uh, in the desert, in Cush. And then uh, their families were... Uh, really began to be adopted into the tribe of Judah. And back when you read about uh, uh, the, uh, the woman, Jael, who killed the uh, Sisera, the Canaanite king. Remember, he came for rest and she took a, a spike and drove it through his head. She was a part of this family. And then Jonadab went with Jehu. Jehu was the one who God raised up and he uh, began to destroy the prophets of Baal. And Jonadab was a part of that to cleanse the, the nation of these, of these demonized priests. And so he, he got his family together and he made them take a vow that never would they drink wine or alcohol. He made them 
uh, take this vow unto God. So now the Chaldeans are coming down. And the whole country is in a war. And these Rechabites move up to Jerusalem for safety. Jerusalem had the, the most fortified city there in all of Israel. And so they came inside of Jerusalem. And Jeremiah the prophet, he knew the vow that they had made. But he invited them in and he set a big feast before him, a big table before him of food. And he served them wine. And they had cups and gallons of wine that was spread before them. And uh, he said, drink up, drink all of the wine and enjoy yourself. And Jonadab stood up and he said, we made a vow unto our father. And that was never would a day a Rechabite would drink wine. And... When he said that, Jeremiah, who was really testing them, he said, because you've kept your vow, never will a day pass that a Rechabite doesn't stand before the Lord. Now, you don't read about some of these groups of people because they've been totally wiped out, but not the Rechabites. They ended up settling down around the Dead Sea, many of them, uh, became blacksmiths. Many of them were gypsies. They were around Jericho. And when Jesus began to preach, many of the first people who accepted Christ were the Rechabites. They became followers of Christ. And many of them became great leaders and great and mighty people of God during that first century. But it all goes back to the Word of God is true and what God declared came to pass now when you begin to read in the Bible God said the word God said is found nine times in Genesis chapter 1 the Lord spake is found 560 times in the first five books of the Bible it's found 3,800 times in the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 40 in Isaiah alone, it's found 40 times. In Ezekiel, 60 times. In Jeremiah, God said is found over 100 times. There are 3,856 prophecies that have been fulfilled out of the Bible. The Bible was written uh, over a period of 1,600 years by 40 different authors on three continents and in three languages. And the Word of God has tried to be destroyed, it's tried to be burned, it's tried to be disavowed, but the Word of the Lord has never been destroyed, and it's still the best-selling book in the world today. I think we ought to give the Lord a great big praise clap for that. Now I want to share with you just for a few moments the integrity of the Word of God. In, in 1845, there was a doctor, Semmelweis, and he was alarmed at the death rate that took place in hospitals among women that bore children. 30% of the women died. And he was reading in the Bible. And in the book of Leviticus, chapter 15, it talks about how that you are to wash your hands over running water. Well, many of the doctors in those days did not wash their hands. They would examine someone dead and then go into an operating room or go into the delivery of a child. They did not wash their hands, and if they did wash their hands, they would wash them in a bowl that was, was polluted and uh, was dirty water. And so consequently, the people were infected. And he made it a rule in that hospital that they had to wash their hands in clean water. The death rate went from 30% down to 2%. In uh, uh, the bubonic plague, it killed over 25 million people 
in the 1300s. It was one of the most amazing plagues. It just, uh, it just, it destroyed literally uh, mo uh, much of Europe. But there was one group of people that was not affected, and that was the Jewish people. And even though entire cities would be wiped out, the, the Jews, none of them even got sick. And so they begin to um, torture the Jews. They felt like they had magical powers and maybe they were behind the bubonic plague. But the fact is, because of their hygienic training that came from the Word of God, when others were destroyed, they were not. It's very interesting. Uh, years ago, Morgan and I went out to Wyoming and we went up to one of the famous, um, the famous uh, uh, camps, Camp Laramie, Fort Laramie. Fort Laramie had a huge uh, sickness that would come through that camp. And they had a Jewish doctor that was there at Fort Laramie. And he noticed that the latrine and the sewage was dumped in at the front of the camp into the river. And then the river flowed down through the camp and the water was taken, the drinking water, from the uh, end of the camp. At the front of the camp, the sewage was dumped in, it flowed down, and then the water was taken out. So he wrote to West Point and he said, I believe if we change that around, we, we had the sewage at the end of the camp and we got the water intake at the front of the camp, things would change. Well, West Point uh, said that's ridiculous. It's uh, scientific proof that if water goes over 10 foot of stone, that it's purified. And so he argued and he used the Bible as an argument. And finally, after three years, they allowed him to change, the, uh, change it around. And when he did, sickness stopped over 80% there at Fort Laramie. In, in the West. How did that happen? It happened simply through the revelation of the Word of God. It's very interesting that in the 1800s there was a man by the name of Matthew Murray. He was, became the father of oceanography. And uh, his textbooks are still used today. And it's really become the Bible of oceanography. And he read in the book of Psalms chapter 8 verse 8 it says, the path, there are paths of the sea. And so he said, if God said there are paths in the sea, I'm going to find them. And so he began to sail the, the oceans, and he took God at his word and discovered the warm and cold continental uh, currents, and he based his whole findings on the word of God, and it's still true today. Somebody say amen. Uh, the, the, uh, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, it says, It is he that sets upon the circle of the earth. The word of God declared the world was round uh, before uh, anybody knew it was round until Christopher Columbus sailed and he proved the world was round. They believed it was flat. They believed it set on some type of of animal, like a, 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 I've, I've seen drawings of on a, a, a large tortoise, and you could literally sail off the edge of the earth. But the Word of God declared that the world was round. In, in Job chapter 38, 35, it says, Can you send lightnings that they may go and say to you, uh, Here we are? The Bible prophesied television and radio waves, and television waves, and prophesied it from the oldest book in the Bible. The book of Job, they believe Job was, was an ancestor of Abraham. And it actually was written before Moses uh, wrote the first five books of the Bible. And he prophesied radio and television 
uh, waves, and that's a, it literally the way it is. The water cycles in, in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 7, in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, in Amos chapter 6, it talks about the hydrologic cycles of water that it wasn't until about 50 years ago that they were able to really explain, and that is how the Mississippi River can dump over 518 billion of gallons of water a day into the Gulf of Mexico, and yet the water levels always stay the same all over the earth. How does that happen? Not counting the thousands of other rivers that dump their waters into the oceans, but in Amos chapter 9, he explains it. He takes the waters of the sea, and he takes them and pours them back up on the earth. It's the word of God that explains it all. Shipbuilding. In Genesis chapter 6, it gives the, the uh, dimensions of the ark. It talks about the cubits. Now, normally a cubit is from your elbow to your finger, and it's 18 inches. The cubit in the time of Moses went actually a little higher than the elbow and was 22 inches. But what you're talking about is a carrying capacity of a train four and a half miles long, 1.5 million cubic feet of carrying space on Noah's Ark. It wasn't until the mid-1800s that a ship was ever built the size of Noah's Ark. The USS Oregon during World War II was the flagship of the United States Navy, and it was one-seventh smaller than Noah's Ark. But until the late 1600s, now listen to me, that's after, that's after Columbus discovered America. They took the dimensions of the Ark and they, they modified them, but on that same scale, they began to change the way they built ships. And our large ships in the carrying capacity of every major freighter in the world is based upon Noah's Ark. Order your copy of the Family Roots Bible during Black History Month and pay only $39.99 plus shipping and processing. I hold in my hands the Family Roots Bible. This is one of the most extraordinary Bibles you've ever seen. I helped put it together with a team of people, over 230 pages of really the reason people of color have risen. It hasn't been education alone. It hasn't been because of politics, but it's been because of this book. It's been because of the church and because of prayer. Order your copy of the Family Roots Bible during Black History Month and pay only $39.99 plus shipping and processing. I would like for everybody to have this Bible. It has the history of the blacks, such as myself, who grew up in a segregated country like Wheeler, Alabama. I want you to know that this Bible is the Word of God. You need this Bible in your home, not only for salvation, but you need this Bible because it is the Word of God and it do have the history of the blacks and the slaves who have struck it down through the years to get where they are today. And if you call now and use your major debit or credit card, we will send you the all-new CD, The Best of Black Gospel, Volume 1 and 2, as a special free gift just for ordering during Black History Month. Call now and ask for this King James Bible with over 200 pages of facts and pictures of the struggle and rise to prominence of African Americans in the last 250 years. Operators are standing by, so call now.
God gave the dimensions of that back in Genesis chapter 6. So when we talk about the integrity of the Word of God, we're talking about a book that God declares is infallible. It changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Years ago, I read an article in the New York Times. And in that article, it talked about how when God spoke to Joshua, and they went into the, into the promised land, they were told many times to kill all the animals. Don't even spare a cow or a sheep. Don't even spare even one. And the New York Times went on to say that bestiality or sex with animals was so prevalent in that part of the world that many of those sheep and goats and animals had venereal disease. And by killing and obeying that commandment to kill all those animals, it literally spared the human race from being destroyed. Uh, you, you may think that is so unusual, but when you go up to the Himalayas, and we hiked up into the Himalayas, 60% of the men have had sex with sheep or goats and 40% of the women. So when you have a meeting and you have an altar service, not only do you get them saved, but then you cast the demons out of them. There has to be a huge deliverance that takes place in that part of the world. Right out of Kathmandu, there is an image of Sheba, this beastly goddess, Hindu goddess. It's about the size of a five-story building. It's the goddess of bestiality. It's the goddess of having sex with animals, with sheep, and with goats. And so they come from a, in, from a, um, a, a society where this is so prevalent and where the word of God speaks the evils against it. In Job chapter 28, verse 25, he even declares the wind has a weight. And he begins to prophesy things that ordinary people don't even think of. You see, the earth, can you imagine how much a, a gallon of water weighs? A gallon of water is very heavy. It weighs uh, about eight pounds. You take water and how many gallons of water are in the oceans? And the oceans cover the majority of the earth. And so the weight of earth, how does it stay in balance? Well, God has the sun and the moon to provide the gravity that keeps the earth right on course. I tell you, God really figured this thing out when he made the heavens and the earth. Can I hear an amen? amen. The Bible talks in Job chapter 38, 16, he talks about springs in the sea. Well, they have discovered, and even on the cameras, the hot water vents and in the ocean. And how all of this, uh, out of the depths of the earth, the core of the earth, there are vents that allow hot currents to come out of the sea. And this is where the warm and the cold currents come. God ordained all of this. In Jeremiah chapter 33, it talks about the stars cannot be numbered. In the, um, in the uh, mid-1800s, there was an astro uh, astronomer in Italy that announced that he had counted all of the stars. There was 1,147 st uh, stars. But now, but, but Jeremiah said the stars are impossible to be numbered. But now with the Hubble Space Telescope, there are multi multiplied billions of stars that cannot be numbered. It's just what the Word of God declared. Come on, can I hear an amen? amen. Now, I want to I share this. This is the year of the Shemitah. It's also the year of the four blood moons. Nobody knows when the year of the Jubilee is. 
But the year of the Jubilee is kind of a year of the super Shemitah. It has to fall on a Shemitah year. And actually, how you read it, it's, uh, it's every 49 years, not necessarily every 50 years. It's every 49 years it carries over. And probably, say probably, the last uh, uh, jubilee, the, the jubilee was probably in 1917, 1966, and 1967. In 1967, that was the year of the four blood moons. And look what happened to Israel. They got Jerusalem back. And that's what happens in the year of a jubilee. There is, the land comes back. And so you, now you're seeing the year of the Shemitah, 50 years later, we are entering into a time that probably this is the year of Jubilee, started about two weeks ago. Now, let me share just a moment what this means. It means in the midst of darkness, we're going to shine like a star. It means that God is going to bless us. Whether anybody else gets blessed or not, I'm going to get blessed. If everybody else goes broke, I'm going to be able to loan them money. Hallelujah. That's exactly what it means. I was talking yesterday to the uh, tennis coach at the University of Louisville. They're a top 25 team, and they have been for years. And Coach Rex Karma actually grew up in our church, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in our church. And <clears throat> Rex, Rex, he's 49 years old, and his sister, who attends our church occasionally, she told him, says, this is the year of the Shemitah, this is the year of the Jubilee year, and this is your Jubilee year. Well, Rex has had a hard time recruiting and uh, he's told his, his wife, he says, you know, I, I really can't get these guys good enough because we're in this ACC, and the ACC is the toughest tennis conference there is in America. And last year, they were in the NCAA tournament, and his number one player just had a meltdown in the NCAA tournament, and Rex almost backslid over that. And uh, he was so upset, he told his number two player, you're going to be number one. And he told the number three player, you're going to be number two. And he looked at his number one player and said, I don't know where you're going to fit. Well, that fellow practiced all year round. And they have what is, uh, they have in the fall the NCAA single championships. And then they have the team's championships in the, in the uh, spring. Well, his, his uh, boy, he, he put, he still, let him stay number one, and he sent him to the tournament, and there are 12 rounds. There's 300 players, single elimination, and his first, his first opponent was from Duke, and Duke has one of the top players in the nation. And uh, he thought, well, he'll get knocked out there, but he beat him. Then he played Africa's number one player. He slaughtered him. Then he played Europe, the Europe's number one player that's going to college. He beat him. And he went all the way down to the finals, and he played uh, Southern California's number one player who has all the markings of being a super pro, who slaughtered everybody in the whole tournament, and his fella beat him and was the national champion. Rated 115th and he wins the national champion. Now what am I saying? I'm talking about when it's the year of Jubilee, God takes you at 116th, and he pulls you all the way up to number one. That's what I'm talking about. And I believe that this is a season that God is going to do great and mighty things, but you've got to take the gloves off. You've got to believe God in a dimension that you have never believed God before. And to do that, you got to pray different. You have to pray according to the Word of God. And to pray according to the Word of God and according to God's promises, you got to believe it. you got to believe it's, it's infallible. It cannot fail. 
Heaven and earth can fail, but God's word will not fail. You've got to stand it. You've got to speak it. You've got to proclaim it. You've got to bark it at the devil. You have got to, you've got to get angry at the evil one. You've got to declare your family to be saved. You've got to learn how to pray to money because it takes money to do anything. You're not going to buy any houses on, on potato chips. You're not going to trade in, in uh, uh, coupons from the Courier Journal to buy a new car. It takes money to start a business. It takes money, and you've got to learn that we've got all the money that God has. But we've got to stand on it. We've got to believe it. We've got to plant seeds. We've got to, we got to stand in the name of Jesus. And it's going to come for the glory of the Lord. Come on, can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, we have a lot of different preachers and a lot of different everything that comes through this church. If I feel like there's a person God's using, I, I go and try to get him. I don't try to get the number two guy. I try to get the number one person whom God's using in the world. I want those kind of people. I want to be exposed to them. And I want the people in this church to be exposed to those kind of people. Amen? Amen. But when it comes to prayer, we understand the principles and the dynamics of prayer and standing on the Word of God. And I have seven chapters that I pray every day. Over the last 10 years, uh, I can almost count on my hands the times I haven't prayed those seven prayers. And the Word of God is living. And so when you pray it, even though you've been praying it maybe a thousand times, it changes. It changes in the dynamics of a prayer and dynamics of that scripture can change and can adapt to many different situations. And it becomes alive to you. And that's where it becomes the rhema or the living word of God. Hallelujah. I want us to stand to our feet right now. And I want us to, I want us to come up around the altar. I want you to gather in close. There's something about praying around the altar that uh, is an incredible thing. And as you begin to come, I want us to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I want us to enter into his presence with worship and with praise. Father, you said, come into your courts with thanksgiving and into your gates with praise. And Father, today we come in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bless, we will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouth. You said, and my tongue shall speak of the righteousness and of the praise all day long. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, he shall see the salvation of God. Father, we worship you today. Forget anybody's even around you. Just begin to pray like you are the only person around. Begin to pray out loud. The effectual fervent prayer is an out loud prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you. You said, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Father, we worship you today in the name of Jesus Christ. We worship you and we praise your great name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to the Lord. Now tonight, tonight, how many have been under some kind of demonic attack? Hold your hand up if you feel like there's been some kind of evil demonic attack. Laura Swan, I want you to come up here in a minute, right now. And we're going to take authority over every demon over every devil that has assigned himself to your family and to your home, we're going to bind it in the name of Jesus. Lord, Lord I want you to lead Devil, you are a defeated foe. 
by his stripes when he did at Calvary, the blood that is shed, that means we're healed, that means our families are healed in Jesus' name. Satan, I bind you in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against us shall prosper in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, any tongue that rises up against us in judgment, it shall be condemned. Devil, I tell you in the name of Jesus, we send you back to hell. In Jesus' name, you have no Bible right in Jesus' name to come over our families. Devil, you are a defeated foe. Devil, you are a liar. In God's word, it says that I come to give life and life more abundantly. So in the name of Jesus, rise up tonight. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up, the army of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, that your word is power. Your word is authority. I decree and declare change even now. I speak it into the realm of the kingdom of God over your home. The change is coming. Restoration is coming. In the name of Jesus, healing is coming. Prosperity is coming. I release it into the atmosphere, not by my name, but by my king's name. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus. 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 The name. The name that is above every name. So be restored. Be healed in Jesus' name. I come against discouragement. I bind that spirit in Jesus' name. And I loose angels to deliver money to people in the name of Jesus. I bind you, devil. You have no authority. Where one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. So, Father God, I thank you. There's many here. And there's power and agreement. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, lift those hands all over this building. Somebody say, I'm entering Jubilee. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. I'm entering Jubilee. Come on, Jubilee is the season of advancement. Come on, Jubilee is the season of promotion. Come on, Jubilee is the season of the blessings of God. Come on, lift those hands. Let's believe God for supernatural prosperity. God, we lift our hands tonight. And Lord, we agree and we believe tonight, Lord, that these hands have the power to create wealth. Lord, you place the power in our hands. So God, we call in across this church. We crawl in across this city. God, we call in across this nation. Lord, a way of the abundance of prosperity God to oh come on somebody to be loosed on these hands Lord I thank you that at the tips of our fingers Lord there's signs there's wonders there's miracle God there's finances that are being released Lord I thank you that you've caused us to be the head and not the tail God I decree that we're above only and we're not beneath God I decree tonight come on somebody I decree tonight that I'm going going over and I'm not going under because God you've given me the power God you've given me the ability to obtain wealth Lord I thank you that standing in our presence tonight God there's millionaires God there's billionaires Lord there's people that the face of God is turning towards us Lord that you're turning men to give unto our bosom Lord that supernatural checks supernatural increase God a deluge Oh, come on, somebody. Lord, of the anointing of the blessings of God, of finances are released. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody's got to get this. God, I receive it tonight. Lord, right here, tithers, givers, doers of the word tonight. So, Lord, I thank you. Oh, that my hands are prospering. Lord, this church is attracting finances. God, our city will be known as a place of the blessings of God that are being poured out and multiplied on your people. Somebody shout if you believe it's true. Yeah. Uh-huh.
Right now, we're going to pray for families. If your family has been battling with strife and contention and a real attack against your family, sons, daughters, moms, dads, however it might be, just lift your hand up a moment. We're going to pray. I want to encourage you just to step forward. And as we're praying, we need to pray that God will do a mighty work. The family's under attack. The family's under attack in every form and fashion. From those that want to say it's anything but man and woman, from those that want to come against the normal structure of the family, there's attacks everywhere. The enemy wants to see the family destroyed. But the family is God's foundation for society. And we're going to come into agreement. And right now, whatever you're suffering, you see the divorce rate should not be the same in the church as it is in the world. And we're going to believe God it will be different. And that God's going to bring healing in lives in whatever way. I want you to join me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come into agreement tonight that the families of this church, of this community, will be strong. They'll be healthy and well. We come against strife and contention in the name of Jesus. Lord, where there's been a war within the family, where there's been anger and hostility, where there's been division and strife, we take authority over the works of the devil in that realm and command them to be broken off of the families here. Father, we pray that there'll be unity, that there'll be harmony within the family, that the peace of God will rule and reign in the name of Jesus, that every family here will be strong, will be healthy, will be filled with love and the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we command every form of darkness, every work of the enemy to be driven out of the family to the glory of God. And may our families serve the Lord and fulfill the destiny that you've ordained for our families. Lord, we speak that over our spouses. We speak that over our children. We speak it over our grandchildren. We declare in the name of the Lord, the generations of the upright shall be blessed. And we proclaim it to the glory of God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good. So you all pray with me. You know, a few years ago, I had sinus operations, two of them, and I kept having sinus infections. And I got MRSA in my sinuses, and that's a bad infection. So the Lord told me, he said, if you'll take my word four times a day, he said, I'll heal you. And so his word, one of it was, my daughter, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Keep them in the midst of your heart and before your eyes, for they will bring life to those who find them and health to all your flesh. And every day I would take God's word four times a day along with my medicine, and God began to heal me. And when I went back to the doctor, he rolled that chair back after he examined me, and he said, I don't know what happened, but you're healed. So God is our healer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you tonight, God, standing on your promises, God. Father, you said, I am the God that healeth thee. Father, you told us that by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. If we were healed, we are healed. And so, Father, I just thank you, God, that you told us in your word, God. You said, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. 
so that nothing shall by any means hurt you. So in the name of Jesus, when you start feeling bad, when you start getting sick, rise up, rise up in the Word of God. Take God's Word and know that God will heal you. Sometimes it don't come instantly. Sometimes it takes weeks, but you will get healed. Look at Pastor Bob. Pastor Bob is the healed of the Lord. The healed of the Lord. God, we just thank you, God. We just thank you, God, for Calvary, God. When we look back at Calvary, God, and we see what Jesus went through, God, when he took that crown of thorns around his head, God, I thank you that it broke Parkinson's. It broke dementia. It broke short-term memory. God, I thank you that it broke that you would prosper and be in health. So God wants us to prosper, and he wants us to be in health. Just yesterday, I got offered a half a million dollar home if I would come and take care of two retarded kids. But I can't take it because I can't leave my family. But God is good, and he wants to bless you. He wants to bless you exceedingly and abundantly above all that you ask. So ask big. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. Pray big prayers. Pray a lot of money. Pray for a million dollars. Pray for a billion dollars. God's got lots of money. And so, God, we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like that. Pray for a million dollars. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want uh, our pastors and our deacons, uh, Drew, I want you and Marshall and and uh, uh, all of our deacons, uh, come on up here. Uh, uh, come, on, come on, I can't even think my, my own name here right now. Uh, praise God. Come on up here. I need you to go on both sides. Uh, and we're going to give oil. Here's what we're going to do. I want us to, we're going to anoint everybody here. We're going to pray over you. And you may get anointed four or five times. You may feel like you had an oil change by the time you leave here. But let me tell you something. What happened up in Canada is not going to happen to you. We're not going to get shot. Our kids are not going to be destroyed by some demonic, evil, demon-possessed person from some terrorist group but God's going to protect us in the name of Jesus do you believe God can protect you I absolutely believe God can protect you and keep you healthy and strong in the name of Jesus praise the Lord I believe that you ought to do everything in your power to protect yourself how many here carry guns can I see your hand you carry a gun. Hold your hand up. There's a few that are truthful. Hallelujah. How many of you are praying about carrying a gun? Well, I'm going to tell you, I think you ought to do whatever is in your power. If I'd had a gun and I'd been there in Canada... I would have probably shot that guy and I'd have shot him in the name of Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, God's not in this business of you having your life snuffed out. God wants you to protect yourself. He wants you to do everything in your power to be safe. Listen to the name, listen to the word of the Lord and uh, God, will, God will help you. One time I was, I had a dream and I was on a plane with my dad and we were flying and we landed in Roanoke, Virginia and I was talking to him and, and, and uh, in those days a plane lands and you stay on the plane we landed and I said you know I had a dream last night he said what did you dream I said I dreamed that some guy came and caught the church on fire and it burned down he said you had that dream when well, I said last night so I had the same dream last night he said let's get off this plane he said he said, I'm calling up and we're up in our insurance. 
We got off that plane and dad doubled the insurance on the church. And we began to bind that, pray that God would protect the church. And God answered our prayer. Nobody burned it down. But if they had have, we'd have got double our money. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. I think you ought to do everything in your power in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Come up here just a minute before we pray. Come on up here just a minute. Come on, walk up those steps. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Did you just come from Indiana? Did you just drive over here from Indiana? Uh, actually, just, uh, I moved to Bargetown, so I'm not, Bargetown in, now? not in Indiana anymore. So. Praise the Lord. Uh, Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is uh, Rick Wilcher. I'm a uh, district manager for Cracker Barrel. Let me tell you, uh, I met Rick. Uh, Rick used to come on the buses and everything, and evangel. And I met Rick at a Cracker Barrel, and he was the janitor. He was sweeping around there. And I went over to him, and I said, Rick, now I'm going to pray for you because God wants to make you the manager. Is, is that right? That's right. And I said, God's going to raise you from the janitor to the manager. And tell him what happened. What happened is, is uh, Bob was at the front door of a Cracker Barrel, and uh, he says, God, you, you've got better plans for this, for Rick. Make him a manager for Cracker Barrel. Six months later, I became a manager for Cracker Barrel. And, uh, and what happened is over the years, um, God really promoted me. Uh, at one time, I had the number one store in the company. One general man manager of the year five times. And then God, then God promoted me to district manager, and I thought I was going to have to leave the state. And then what happened, and God had better plans than that, he, had, he gave me stores right here in Louisville. Amen. He, Rick, had, he, Rick had one of the top stores, and uh, it, it, uh, so they moved him to one of the worst stores. And then it became the top store. And uh, hallelujah. You know, I, I sense, ooh, I just, I just had a go, Holy Ghost chill. Hallelujah. I feel that, that God wants to release that kind of blessing in our church. This is, a, this is a time of blessing. This is our, I want you to speak it and believe it. This is our Jubilee year. Hallelujah. Rick, I want you to pray that kind of prayer. A year of promotion and a blessing. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that you have great jobs for us out there if we need a job today. You know that you can bless us financially. I know, God, you own the cattle on a thousand hills. And today, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for a release of the Holy Ghost in your life right now in Jesus' name. And I'm praying that, God, you would open up the windows of heaven. And I'm praying, God, that anyone that needs a job today, that you'll give them the greatest job that you have out there for them in Jesus' name. And I bind the devil that would hold you in unemployment. I bind the devil that would come against you in your finances. And I speak promotion over your life in the name of Jesus. Right now, we bind and take power and authority over the devil in Jesus' name. Glory to God. And we give you all the praise and the glory and the honor for it. For we believe it to be done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now. Here's what we're going to do. I want our deacons and our pastors to begin to just lay hands one right after another. Rick, I want you to help us pray. I want that anointing to get on everybody. I don't want it to spill over on me. Hallelujah. Rub a little bit that on me. Hallelujah. 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 Now, these singers are going to sing. Hallelujah. Just begin to anoint right now. Hallelujah.
Ladies, get your girlfriends together and make plans now to attend Chick Night, a night of worship, February 20th at 7 p.m. As we welcome recording artist and winner of The Sound, Season 1, Leah Duff. Come as you are, bring every And special guest singer-songwriter, Rachel Bauer. Chick Night is a night for women just like you to get your worship on. Make plans now, February 20th at 7 p.m. at Evangel World Prayer Center. How can we know that the end times are truly here? And how long will it be before the return of Christ? Dr. Bob Rogers answers these questions and more in his CD teachings, Signs of the End Times. Discover the true pattern in the Bible of how we know the times we live in. This teaching will encourage you to spread your faith with others and to win the lost in the last great battle for souls. Signs of the End Times is available now from Bob Rogers Ministries by calling 1-888-613-6080 or visit bobrogersministries.org and request your copy today. You're cordially invited to The Vow, February 15th at Evangel World Prayer Center. Join with us as we honor married couples with the largest vow renewal service in Louisville. Just for participating, you'll receive a free professional portrait and have the chance to win one of two honeymoon cruise vacations and spending cash. And if you've celebrated your 25th or 50th anniversary this year, we have a special gift just for you. Make plans now to attend The Vow, Sunday, February 15th at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m.